Welcome to What's On My Face, where I tell you everything that's on my face in this week's episode of What's Up In Makeup. This video is typically housed at whatsupinmakeup.com, but once a month it is housed on my YouTube channel. So this is the time that it's housed here because I typically do my YouTube chat at this time, but to accommodate a lot of different people who can't join us on Sunday mornings, I change the chat time at the very last Sunday of the month to a later time. So today it will be at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and instead you're getting this lovely video to keep you busy until chat this evening. So I'm gonna go ahead and start where I started, which was face primer. Face primer today is a product that I'm kind of trying to use up. I do like it. It is the Spackle Tinted Under Makeup Primer in Ethereal by Laura Geller. This is a really nice face primer. I do think that it increases the longevity of my makeup just a tad, but honestly, like lately, I've been kind of questioning face primers in general and how effective they truly are. I feel like eye primers are are definitely effective, but as far as face primers, I feel like I need to look into this more. That I've been assuming that they've been doing things where I'm not 100% sure, so I'm gonna be looking into more about face primers and whether they're actually worth the investment. This one in particular does give a little bit of a glow if you have a lighter coverage foundation. If you have a fuller coverage foundation, it's probably gonna, the glow's probably gonna be pretty much covered up. Ethereal, yes, but only under a lighter coverage foundation. It is a lotion-y kind of formula. It's not a silicone-y kind of formula. Um, and it feels nice to go on the skin. I do enjoy this primer. Uh, I don't know if it's 100% necessary, but I do enjoy it. For foundation today, I used two mineral, mineral, mineral. Today for foundation, I used two NYX Mineral foundation sticks. This one is in light medium. This one is in cool tan and I kind of mix these together to get my skin tone and overall I do like them I feel like the lasting power is pretty good they last me through a good school day work day kind of time about six to eight hours um, but I kind of toward that seven eight hour mark they start fading a bit also the coverage is not fantastic on these you really have to build them up and when you do build them up they kind of get to cake face so I I kind of have mixed feelings about these they are kind of fun to use because they are in the stick form um, and I, I like them enough, but I probably would not purchase these and I probably wouldn't recommend purchasing them just because I don't think that they're something that's great. They're fine, but they're definitely not great. So because I used those to beef it up a little bit, I used my Mary Kay Mineral Powder Foundation in Ivory 2. I like to have a mineral foundation or a powder foundation as a backup. So just in case I don't have a, quite enough coverage in whatever foundation or BB cream I use and I want to beef it up just a little bit, this is a nice thing just to have in your drawer just in case. And this is a nice one. Uh, I really like the coverage on this. You can get it up to almost a medium coverage. It is pretty light on its own, but put it over top of a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer, it gives a really nice finish. I've had this for quite a while, but I really do still enjoy it. For concealer today, which I did apply before the powder foundation, you always wanna put your liquids on before the powders or else crazy things can happen. I use the uh, the Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer by Urban Decay. This is in the shade Fair Neutral. It is way too light for me. And I will tell you that I used a big foundation -y blending kind of brush with it initially today just to try something different and it blended it out way too much. I definitely recommend a smaller brush or your fingertips to blend out this product because I feel like it doesn't really do it justice if you blend it out too much. You really have to kind of pat it into the skin to really get that concealing effect. So if the concealers aren't really working on you, you might be over blending them like I did today. Uh, so definitely tapping it into the skin or patting it in with a very small brush. Not very small, but uh, you know, a smaller brush than a face brush is the way that I prefer to use this. It's a nice concealer. Um, I, I Do I think that it's way better than anything else I've ever used? No, definitely not. Um, but, um, I mean, I hate to give it a negative review, but I really don't find this to be anything special. But that might be because, number one, I don't have super bad dark circles. And number two, it's too light of a shade for me. So maybe if I had the right shade or if I had more discoloration problems, I would respect this product a little more. But for me, it's just kind of an okay product. For eyeshadow primer today, 
I use the Julep Blank Canvas Mattifying Eye Primer. I've had some bad issues with this where I feel like it doesn't really do what it's supposed to do as far as the lasting power. What it does do is it will mute out discolorations. It's kind of like Urban Decay's Primer Potion in Eden where it mutes out the discoloration so that you can get more of a blank canvas on your eyes before you apply your eyeshadow and it definitely does that. I don't think that it really makes my eyeshadow stay on longer but it does give a nice blank canvas so it's really what you're looking for in a primer um Personally, I would recommend Max Paint Pot and Painterly or Urban Decay's Primer Potion in Eden instead of this one. That's just my personal opinion. It's not bad, it's just not great. Again, we have a lot of those this week. For brows today, I used this sample of the Milk Makeup Gel Brow. Milk Makeup is a brand new brand to Sephora. I got this in my very first Sephora Play Box. There was an issue where I didn't get the second Sephora Play Box, the one for this month. So I don't know what I'm gonna do as far as reviewing that. I'm kind of a mess with it right now because I didn't get May's box, so there won't be a review this month, and the next month I'm going to be on vacation, so there won't be a review next month, but eventually I'd like to start reviewing Sephora Play. I'm just going to review this product for you. This brow color is very nice. It's very opaque. Um, it is a little bit light for me, but when I press down harder, I feel like it gets a little bit darker, and it's workable. I mean, I like the way that it looks in my brows. My big complaint about this is it's very, very, very waxy very waxy and I don't enjoy that. It feels very heavy on the brow. At this point, I don't really feel it anymore, but for a very long time after I put this on, I've been wearing this for about three hours at this point and I like the effect of it. I just don't like the way it feels for that first couple of hours, hour or two, where it just feels heavy and thick and I would definitely not purchase this just because I don't like that feeling at all. I would definitely recommend getting the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. It's 10 bucks, so much cheaper and so much better than this product in my personal opinion. So this look, I kind of put a lot of mishmashiness into my look, but you might be able to find these colors in your collection. So I figured I would show you what I used. I started off with the Too Faced Chocolate Bonbons palette and I used this color in Pecan Praline as my crease color. It's just kind of a taupey brown. Then I went into this kind of medium to lightish pink color by Urban Decay. It's called Scratch. I got this in one of those Sephora favorites kits. It's the one that was like the pink one. And I really like this. It is a satin finish. So I use this all from here, from like three quarters of the way in, all the way out to the outer corner. Then after that, I was like, well, I was talking to my friends on Periscope and they were like, let's do pink and silver with a pop of green. I was like, yes. So I pulled out this shade. This is called Koosh and it's by ColourPop. Now I don't use my ColourPop shadows very often because I find them difficult to work work with. I just feel like even my pinky finger is just too big. <laughs> I like to use a brush and these just don't work well with the brushes that I personally have. And I just, I'm just not the biggest fan of ColourPop eyeshadow. It's just the application I don't enjoy. It's too much work for me personally. They feel really neat though. They're kind of squishy. They feel just very soft and they have great pigmentation. So I popped this on the inner corner of my lid and I was like, oh, because the shimmeriness, the metallicness of this was too overpowering for this pink shade. So I I had to kind of beef up the pink shade. This is a highlighter. It's by a brand called Artist Couture, and it is the Diamond Glow Powder in Yas. And this is designed by a YouTuber. His name is Angel, and I don't want to butcher his last name. Uh, but I ended up using this kind of as a multitasking product. So after I did the pink all over, I put the ColourPop eyeshadow and Kush from here over to the inner corner of my lid. And then I popped this one. This is, has a little bit of a pink shimmer to it. Well, a lot of pink shimmer, but it's very light pink. I popped that all over my lid. Now that lightened it up quite a bit. So then I layered this back over top of the highlighter and that worked really, really well to bring that pink back into the look. So I really like the way that that came out. With the help of my friends on Periscope, what I decided to use in the outer corner was Bless Her Heart from the Peach Palette. It's that deep olivey green shade. Um, it doesn't really look green here like at all, like I'm looking at it and it's kind of grayed out a bit, but I don't care. It's got a little bit of a green tinge to it, which is kind 
kind of nice. I really like it, but it's not like a poppin' green. It didn't show up super green, um, but I do love it. It's like a nice mossy, mossy color. It's very nice. And then for my brow bone, I use peaches and cream just to kind of bring it all together on the brow bone, just a nice matte brow bone shade. And then that is it for that part of my eye look, for the eyeshadow part. So let's move on to eyeliner. For eyeliner on my upper lash line, I use the Jessie's Girl Liquid Liner in brown. You can't really see that a whole lot in this look, which is totally fine with me. Um, it was just kind of to line my lash line to get it ready for the false lashes. If I wasn't going to wear false lashes, this actually looked really, really pretty before the lashes went on. So I would wear this again with this look. It looked really nice to balance out the look. And then I threw the lashes on, just kind of ruined the brown. But uh, I definitely would recommend a brown liner with this look. Okay, so what is on my lower lash line is what's really popping that I feel like really makes this look unique is the Sephora eyeliner pencil. This is the waterproof version and Caprienia Dreamin'. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. It's Portuguese. I don't know. I don't think I've ever said a Portuguese word on my channel, so I'm really hoping I did that right. But anyway, it is a very bright, bold green liner. And again, I have been wearing this look for a couple of hours now and it has not moved. And I really, really like these Sephora liners. If you ever see these in a set and you like the colors, I definitely recommend them. They stay in my waterline very nicely. Um, and I never hear anybody talk about them and they're super, super, super nice. I also threw that Jessie's Girl a little bit down on the lower lash line. This doesn't really do great for the lower lash line, but I stuck it right on the lashes instead of trying to stick it in my waterline, and it really worked very nicely. So this pairing was pretty good, pretty good. Really for lashes it. today, I'm going to insert the picture right here of the Inky Minky lashes that I use. Um, these are by Zabrina, who is another YouTuber. I love to support YouTubers. This one is in this, uh, the design or the style called White Lie, and I love Zabrina's lashes. They they last really well. I think this is maybe the fifth time I've used this pair of lashes. I've used it quite a bit. They still look the same as they did when they came out of the box. Um, they haven't worn down at all. They haven't gotten goopy or gloppy or anything. I really like them a lot. I'm really enjoying her lashes. Definitely recommend okay, Moving them. on to my cheeks. I use this blush. This is an Essence blush in the shade Heat Wave. I kind of stuck to the this side right here, the pinkier side, and I really like this blush a lot. I want to get more of these. I don't know how many more shades they make in this, but this is the shade number 10. Uh, so I'm hoping there's more of these because I would really, really like to buy more. I did get this last year, I think at Generation Beauty in the swag bag, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I'm just absolutely loving it. And I love the ombre effect. Number one, it's really beautiful. And number two, you truly get two completely different shades in this blush, which is really For nice. contour, I broke into my Kevin Aquan contour book, but this shade is sold individually. This one right here, the sculpting powder, it's in the shade medium. Um, this one is sold as an individual and it's kind of my perfect contour. I really love this shade for contouring. It's just a beautiful, cool tone, which is what I personally prefer. Um, and I really love the shadows in here. The, the candlelight powder isn't great, like for me, because I would like a super pop and highlight, but if you like a more subtle highlight, something more along the lines of Hourglass, you'll probably really like the candlelight powder. I'm not as big of a fan of the cream products in here. I have used them, but I prefer the powder products. So for me, the big wins on in this particular palette is the sculpting powder and then the eyeshadow. Uh, but I don't think you can get this anymore. Um, I've heard of people finding it d on discount here and there. Um, so if you do uh, see this somewhere, it's definitely a recommend from me overall. I mean, I really, uh, I love this palette. It's very fun to use. Even if just I'm just using the powder products, I still really, really like and this a lot. And then finally, we're gonna do lips and nails. For lips, I am wearing as a recommend from the community of Ron Periscope. And I, I'm so sorry, I can't remember who the name of the person that recommended it. I can't, I, I'm like, terrible with it. So I sincerely apologize that I can't remember. If I can get it um, off of Periscope on the replay, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put the person's name right here. So thank you so much for the recommendation. This is Solo by ColourPop. I really like this one a lot. It's a little more subtle than what I really want to do today. We tried on a bunch of bright shades and it didn't really work. So this one worked out pretty well. And then what I did was I took the highlighter in Yas and I just popped it in the center, kind of mum mum mummed it out. And that's how I got my lip look for today. And I, I think I can't came out good. I think I, I really like it a lot. It's better than I thought it was going to be when I was like, solo, that's so boring. But adding that highlight, uh, that sparkle in there really, really helped a lot. And I also used the um, Yas for my highlight today um, that I forgot to mention. I use that as a highlight. It's a very glittery, glittery, glittery highlight though. So just be prepared if you buy those um, Artist Couture highlights that they are super, super, super glittery. They're not shimmery, they're glitter. So just 
Be forewarned, be forewarned. And then for nails today, uh, I'm using the Julep Polish in Soleil. <sighs> Julep is my favorite nail polish brand, I have to say. They are the most consistently awesome brand over S, well over Essie, because Essie I feel like is very inconsistent. Zoya, um, you know, I have lots of different polishes. If you guys have seen my polish wall, I have so many different brands. Um, I have Orly's, you know, I have a NARS polish, I have uh, OPI's, I have all these different brands, but Julep by far is my favorite. I know that they are smaller than the typical polish, but for me, the way that I buy them, I feel like it's worth it. If you get their mystery boxes, that's a great way to get a bunch of julep polishes. If you're a julep maven, that's another great way to be to get a lot of julep polishes for less than the full price. I would not pay $14 for a nail polish, and I have not bought any julep polishes at full price. Um, I've gone through their different systems to get them, so I definitely feel like they're worth a discounted price. I would pay at most $10 for one of these, but I'd have to really, really love it. I prefer to go to $68 root on any nail polish. After that, it gets kind of crazy. That's why I love the mystery boxes in the julep um, maven program. In order to get more of these. So that's it for what's on my face and what's on my nails. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and again, this is housed on whatsupinmakeup.com every single week. So if you want to see what's on my face in future videos, you know where to go. It's all always listed in the description under what's up in makeup. So if you forget and you, you're like, oh, what, what is she wearing? What's her lipstick? What's her blush? What's whatever? What's her eyeshadow? Um, go in the description of what's up in makeup. It'll take you straight to, um, to what's up in makeup.com where the video is housed so you can check it out. So I want to thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. If you're not already subscribed, you can click the subscribe button. It's right there. And also this week's episode of What's Up In Makeup is also over there. Uh, don't forget to follow me on the social media. Jen loves reviews everywhere. And I will see you very, very soon in another video. Mad love. Bye.